Hello there, I'm Tien, and I'm a sound engineer. To all you filmmakers who plan on recording your own sounds, probably because you don't have the budget to hire a proper sound engineer, you must know that the audio quality of your raw recordings has to be of acceptable standard. I'm a DJ. Okay, I'm cool. I'm right here. Because there are certain audio glitches that not even the big studios with all the expensive tools can repair in post-production. I'm a DJ. Okay, I'm cool. I'm right here. Dude, you gotta record this again. So you better record it correctly on the spot, especially if, say, your lead actor couldn't commit to a reshoot. This requires you to know some basic theory in audio recording. But since we're not doing complex setups such as recording an orchestra in surround sound format, I'll make this quick. For the same reason you don't use a webcam to shoot your films, you should not rely on your camera's onboard mic to record the actual audio. It should at most be used to record the reference audio. You have to buy or rent a good microphone. And generally, the more expensive the mic, the more clean and clear you can expect the sound to be. Some mics are built for recording voices in studios, some for recording drums, and no one microphone is good for every scenario. For on-location recording, I recommend you a shotgun mic or a wireless lavalier kit, which is what I'm using right now. Most professional-grade mics use an XLR plug which fits into most professional-grade cameras or into high-end consumer camcorders through a customized adapter. If your camera has no mic inputs at all, you need to use a separate field recorder to record your audio. Still, to get good sound out of this expensive gear, you've got to operate it properly. This is an overexposed picture. It was recorded too bright for the camera's image sensor to handle, and darkening it in post-production won't recover the lost details. On the other hand, this is distorted audio. I'm a DJ. Okay, I'm cool. I'm right here. It was recorded too loud for the audio equipment to handle, and softening it in post-production only makes the crappy sound softer. During the shoot, the volume meter turned red to indicate audio distortion, just as zebra lines indicate overexposed areas of your picture. You need to lower the microphone gain settings even before the recording starts. Do not mistake this for the headphone volume, which only controls how loud you hear it, but not how loud it actually gets recorded. The idea is to capture every sound as loud as possible while avoiding audio distortion. So before you start shooting, get your subject to talk very loudly while you tune the gains to be just before the meters start becoming red so that it will never distort during the actual shoot even when your subject unexpectedly raises his voice I'm a DJ okay I'm cool I'm right there. a wet and echoey sound is much like an out of focus picture while a dry and clear sound like this is to a sharper picture editing tools can make a sharp picture blur or a dry sound wet. wet. But there is a big limitation in the reverse process. Therefore, you want to record the dry sound itself and not its wet echoes. The shotgun mic is ideal for this purpose because it is most sensitive to the direction it is pointed at compared to the echoes coming from the sides. Aiming the microphone is not enough. You still have to place the microphone as close to your subject as possible and in the direction the sound travels. This sounds better, but the mic is in the shot. You can easily move it out of the frame for close-up shots like this. But for wide-angle shots like this, the mic has to go so far just to leave the frame that the sound becomes echoey again. So, you can either hide the microphone behind some nearby object, or simply use a tiny lavalier microphone which is hard to see. Testing. However, you're gonna need more than one for every other person in the shot. Uh, sorry man, none for you. If a video editor tried to edit this shot, there is no way to remove this blocker without also cutting me away. So get lost. The same goes for sounds. Overlapping sounds cannot be separated without compromise. Video guys use green screens to capture a subject because it is easy to remove the green background later. Similarly, audio engineers use voiceover booths because we want to capture the sound and only the sound and not that guy. I need you to shoot. But we don't have a voiceover booth on location, so you better request for silence on the set. I need you to come back for the on location shoot, right? Also, turn off noisy air conditioners. 
put on wind filters on your microphones to break the wind noise and avoid handling noise when dealing with the microphone. If noise pollution cannot be silenced, move to a quieter location. Last but not least, always record one minute of ambient sound for every location. This can be used in post-production to seamlessly tie together scenes shot in different locations. Hey you! Who we? Catch! Hey you! Who we? Catch! Congratulations! You now know how to record a single subject in mono sound. But that's just the easy stuff compared to stereo recording, surround sound recording, drum miking, recording orchestras and rock concerts. I hope this tutorial was helpful and perhaps given you some interest in further studying the world of audio. Thanks for watching. Oh, gosh. Whew. That was tiring. Uh, you didn't have to, you know. I was using the lavalier the whole time and it's not plugged in. <laughs>